Welcome to this fourth part of Ultimate Orchid Mold. So um, I'm going to be uh, in this particular segment showing you how to make the Vanda Orchid. Now the Vanda Orchid is this beautiful purple orchid. Um, this is a very popular orchid in Singapore and Southeast Asia. And it comes in shades of purple, lavender, right through to pinks, all right? So again, there are hybrids. And just like I've mentioned before, there are many varieties and color variations. So the Vanda Orchid, all of the components are individually wired, all right? So a little bit like the Cymbidium, and, uh, but again, a little bit different as you will see. Now, um, when we make the Vanda, I'm going to be using this sort of uh, purple color as a base, this sort of lavender purple color. And this is the same um, color that I used in my Flower Pro Book 2 when I did the calla lily. So when I made the purple calla lilies, and on the videos I showed how to make um, these purple color calla lilies, I used this same lavender color. So it's the lilac uh, formula I've used, which is in the front of your book here, uh, which is uh, basically I use um, 85 grams of rose pink or pink gum paste, and then uh, five grams of pink sugar paste or rolled fondant, and 10 grams of purple uh, rolled fondant. So I'm using 85 grams of gum paste, 15 grams of fondant, but this will achieve this lovely lavender color that I use for like halloween and certain other flowers. Which of course you could also take a purple um, uh, paste gel color, all right? Remember violet, violet is a color we use a lot in cake decorating, but violet is more towards a blue. Um, the uh, purple is more towards the reds and magenta colors, so it's a warmer color, so like an amethyst color. But uh, as I said, so you can either use pre-colored paste or obviously you can uh, just add that with your paste color. So I'm going to start off, uh, first of all, making the column. So this uh, second part of the mold, this is obviously in this lesson four, is the first time we've used this. Uh, in the previous three uh, lessons, the one, two, and three or parts, I did the Dendrobium orchid, the Oncidium orchid, then the Cymbidium. And uh, in this, uh, on this mold, there are uh, components for two orchids, uh, the Vanda orchid, which is what we're going to make now. So I'm going to actually use this part here, which is the column, okay? And then this is going to be the throat part of the Vandal Orchid. And then these are the sepals, three of these and two of these. So very similar to, obviously, uh, the Cymbidium in the way that it's sort of made. Um, and then that will be the, and then the buds are going to be made in these four cavities here. And then the last lesson or segment is going to be on the Phalaenopsis or Moth Orchid, where we'll be using um, this part here, the two wing petals, this part, the column, and then again the bud mold. Okay, so this is used, this part of the mold is used for Vanda orchids and for the Phalaenopsis or moth orchid. So the Vanda orchid, um, again, you know, obviously comes in different colors. I'm going to be doing this lovely purple color here. So I have here a 20, um, sorry, 24 gauge wire. So I'm going to make the um, column, and then I'm going to, once I made the little column, I'm going to, um, to make the throat. So I'm going to take the 24 gauge wire and it's going to make a little hook on the end of this. All right. So it's going to make a little hook on the end of the, the wire here. And this wants to be again about a five millimeter hook on the end of this. So it's about a five, five millimeter hook on there. Okay. <clears throat> and quite a close, quite a closed hook on there. Then we're going to take a number five size ball of paste. Okay. So I'm going to use a number five size ball of paste. Just measured off here. There we go. So this is going to be a standard size, so one third below, two thirds above. So number five size ball. So it's going to condition your paste just a little bit. So a tiny bit of vegetable shortening into here. And then I'm going to take some egg white. Just going to brush some egg white onto my wire here. Okay, like so. And we're going to do this very similar to the way we did the Cymbidium um, column in that we're going to insert the paste into here. We're going to mold this down. This wants to just be molded down to it's about the length of the column, which you can see here. Now, just like the Cymbidium, this isn't going to be sort of flat on the back. It's going to be a little flatter on the back, but you're basically going to just put some little tiny bit of vegetable shortening. So just open it up to release it. Okay. And then you can just pop a little so it's not sticky. Okay, and then it's going to place the place the mold into there. Just going to press this in. But you see how you have this little bit of a back to it. So just stay within the mold here. So it won't be flat on the back. It's going to be a little bit rounded here, like so. Okay. 
All right, and then you're going to release this from the mold. So you'll have these, you'll have this almost like this little mouth. So it looks like a little tiny mouth here, and it looks a little bit like two eyes. It reminds me a little bit of a T-Rex sort of mouth and the eyes. And um, now, when I do this, um, I typically use for the little yellow parts here, you know, like obviously on the Cymbidium Orchid we used, um, on the Cymbidium we used the little number two ball of paste and on the Dendrobium Orchid. What I'm actually going to use here is I'm going to use little non-parels. So these are like you buy for uh, cookies and for cupcakes and things like sprinkles. And these are yellow non-parels, all right? To pick them up, I'm using this little um, gadget here. This is a Draget pickup tool. And um, this, um, you're going to put some wax onto here. So you're going to put some wax onto the end of it like this, okay? And then what you'll actually do here is you're going to pick up, you see this will actually pick up the little tiny non-parel because these are really, really tiny and difficult to pick up with tweezers. Now, when I um, when you attach those, I'm not going to use egg white or edible glue because it would almost dissolve them. So I'm going to use a little bit of piping gel um, for that. So I'm going to use a little tiny uh, needle applicator, okay? And I'm going to put just a little tiny dot of piping gel into each of the little cavities. So just literally just going to just put a little dot of piping gel here, it's just coming out. There we go. Just squirt that out. Just make sure it comes out. There we go. All right, it's just a little tiny bit there. Now the alternative you could use if you didn't have an applicator like this is you can just uh, take a little bit of piping gel and then just take your companion tool and just dip it into the, the piping gel and then just push a little bit of into the eye, into the eye, and that will give you the stickiness there. And you see then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then just take the little uh, pickup tool and then just going to attach the little eyes here and then the second one here. But I use this a lot for cake, for little tiny dragets and things on cookies. You can use this for uh, little flower centers and all different types of things. This is actually a diamond tool. It's used for diamond painting, and um, but it works really, really well for, as I said, for this type of application. Um, so we're going to put the little, the yellow like little eyes in here. All right. So, and uh, so here you have the center part. This is your column. All right. Now that needs to dry. So this one is one I dried. So obviously, you know, that needs to dry for a few hours, just like you've understood now on the orchids. And then we're going to move on to actually make the throat part here. They can look, looks a bit like a bone shape. So again, we're going to take just a little tiny bit of vegetable shortening on here. I'm going to take a number, there's going to be a number seven small size ball of paste. So it's going to just work a little bit of fat into this and then just going to roll that into a little sausage here. Now remember, when you're coloring white paste with colors, when you make dark colors like this, a lot of times it's going to make it a little bit softer. So that's where sometimes you uh, you would uh, use a little bit of extra cornstarch. So what I'm doing is I'm just sort of pressing it almost like, as you can see, it looks a bit like a dog bone shape, you see? And then what I'll do is I will then start to work into the two parts of the, the two ends. This wider end that is ruffled, this is actually the tip of the pedal. You see how I'm just working this in with my cosmetic sponge here. It's going to be a little bit thicker in the middle, which is what we want. Just make sure you stay within the perimeter of the, the mold here. All right. Now for veining this, I'm going to use my uh, fan veiner. I remember this is the fan veiner which is sold separately, but comes with the sunflower. I'm going to use this here. I'm going to use this here. All right, so you see this gives this lovely vein in each end of the piece, all right? And I'm going to take my piece here, just flex this down. And you can just use your little flexi scraper. This will just come out of the mold like this. All right, and we're going to put this onto the pad. So first of all, I'm going to on the back, so this is the back where you've got the, from the fan veiner. So on those top 
petals here, the sort of not the ones with the scallop. These ones, I just want to just soften them slightly. So I'm just going to just soften them around slightly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then turn the pad over. And so now I'm on the heavy vein side and this I'm going to use the Dresden tool. So just like I showed you on the, when we did the Cymbidium, we're going to then just ruffle this on here. And then we're going to go back to the soft side and just work from the outside to the inside. So this will just sort of frill this edge of the throat here. All right. I'm going to put this onto cosmetic sponge. I'm going to use my balling tool and then these ones will just be cupped slightly. So you're just going to cup the two, the two like the plain ones. All right. And then with your companion tool, we're going to make a line down the middle. So I'm just going to make a line down the center. And then with my companion tool, just literally a few millimeters away from the edge, about four to five millimeters, I'm just going to drill a hole through there like that. So I'm just drilling a hole through the, you can see through the, through the end here. All right. Now this is my dry center. So on the underneath part of like the little, so like underneath this part here, where it's a little bit rounded, we're going to put your egg white. Remember, don't use too much egg white, but just in that area there. And then what I will do is you're just going to thread this down through the so the wire just comes through here like this and you pull this down until that sits into there like so. And you're just going to press your little like dinosaur head there. And then what I'm going to do is just going to just pinch this around and you're going to hold it like this and just sort of pull the little wing pedals forward. So you're just going to pick, pull those little wing pedals forward like this. All right. You see how you're just pinching it round the round there and just pulling it forward like this. And then what we do is we dry this. So we dry this in your crepe foam former. So you just dry this in the former like this. You can see how this is going to give you this sort of lovely, um, this lovely uh, uh, shape to the to the throat. You see, all right. So it's going to give you this nice shape to the throat there, like that. All right, and that's how that's how the throat will dry. Um, so this will need to dry and then next step is going to be making the sepals and petals. Welcome back. In this segment, I'm going to show you how we do the sepals and the petals. So we're going to make, um, just like on the Cymbidium, we're going to make this one that's like a spoon shape. All right, we're going to make three of these and these three will be used for the head and the two legs. And then this is going to be a little bit like the Cymbidium. We're going to make one right and one left hand and these are going to be like the wing petals. Okay. So we're going to use uh, number seven small. So the same thickness that we use for the um, size for the um, obviously the other components uh, for the throat we've just made. <clears throat> now, of course, the order you do things is entirely up to you. So when you make this, you, of course, your column has to dry. So then you could, of course, make your, you go ahead and make your petals and sepals. And then you can come back and do the throat or you can make the first part of the bud. So, you know, you, I'm showing this in or just in order of uh, flower buds and finishing off and things. So we're going to take um, again just a little bit of vegetable shortening here. Going to take my paste once I've made that into a little cone shape. Going to put that into into the mold here. So I'm really emulating the shape of the like a spoon shape there. You see, and then I'm going to now. Just start to work this into the edge of the the edge of the mold. And then once you work this to the edge of the mold, like this, I'm going to again just going to create your little ridge. Like I've shown on some of the other pieces, 28 gauge white wire. I'm going to insert the wire into the into the paste here. Just wants to feel it go in about just about a little bit more than halfway up. And this is the back veiner, all right. So this is the back veiner that comes with the set, all right. So this is the um, the back veiner is included because this is quite a 
unique sort of design. And then again, you're going to just sort of press this onto the top here. Just go over the surface of this. That will then just vein that. You see, you're going to get the nice veining onto here. And then this is the veining on the front, which is this sort of traditional sort of uh, rounder shape. Right, and you see that it comes out really easily. You don't need to use any corn, but if your paste is a little sticky, it's a little sticky here in the studio. So um, it came, you saw it just popped out straight away. Now the side that is raised, that's the back. And then the side that's recessed, which has got the, that's the front of the pedal. Okay. So we're going to then going to just soften very, very slightly around your edge. Okay. And then on the front of the pedal, just going to just mold around the bottom. I'm going to just hollow the base. All right. So it's going to just mold around the bottom and just hollow the base of the pedal on the front. Now on the, on these pedals here, all right, what we're then going to do is we're going to use spoons. All right. And I'm going to dry them in spoons. So I want the front side down. So I'm just going to put it I'm just going to literally, what I'm going to do is going to hold the end of the wire and bend it up towards me so that the wire is curving up this way. All right. So it's going to go into the spoon like this, because what these will actually do is they will dry. I'll show you this one here. You see, they're going to dry in the spoon like this, and then they'll actually will be, these pedals will be curling back. All right. So this is said, so this is the back of the pedal. All right. So this is the front of the pedal. Front of the pedal is the sort of more the smooth side where you hollow. Okay. But then remember you said you turn it over and instead of bending the wire down, like we did before you bend the wire up. So you cup it up so that when you go in and that, what that means is then the pedal will create that nice natural shape. Because although it is only a 28 gauge wire, um, if you don't bend the wire, the flower, flower is going to have a very, very stiff look. All right. And then just going to just have a little bit of a frilling on the edge of your pedals. Okay. Um, now, when you continue with the, when you continue with these pedals, you do this exactly the same way. All right. So you're going to use number seven, small, number seven, small. You're going to put the wire in just like on the Cymbidium, the wire will go in at an angle, but these will go, that will actually go right in the middle of these pedals. Okay. And then when you put the back veiner on again, you're just going to follow. So the veiner will just follow that V shape in the wire and you press this on the back and then you'll take that off. You'll soften the back. All right. You'll soften the back of the pedal. And once you soften the back of the pedal, all right, you turn it over onto the front. And with your companion tool, you're going to hollow the front. And then these two, the wing pedals, these are dried flat side up. So the front up, up on these ones. And so what you do here is you just take like cosmetic sponge and I've just cut some little squares and I'm just going to lay these over the top. All right. So basically the, um, the head and legs are dried upside down. All right. And then, as I said, the arms and legs are dried the other way around. It's just a shape. It just gives you a slightly different shape pedal. All right. And, uh, so these ones will be the two arms and legs and you see, so you do one left and one right hand one. So these will form the arms. Okay. All right. And, uh, because if I dry them on the, if I dry them on the crepe foam, these ones are dry. If I dry them on here, it's almost just a little bit. It's not going to give the enough support there. Okay. So that's why I use a slightly different technique here, uh, with, with, um, as I said, with this little cube here and here. All right. So those are your components. All right. So you have that. These will be your wing pedals. And then these will be your, so remember these ones are just dried upside down basically in the spoon. Okay. And that's sort of how you would, what, how we would actually um, make your components. All right. So these are your components of your, for your orchid. All right. So those are the uh, wired components. So next step is going to be to show you how to make the buds. To make the buds of the Vanda orchid, we're going to make the lovely buds here of the orchid. These are going to start off the little tiny ones in a very, very pale green and then going into the purple color. And um, so when we make these, so first of all, for the larger buds, we're going to take this 26 gauge wire. And with the 26 gauge wire here, I'm going to go round one, two, three, four, five, hook, one, two, three, four, five going to come down the wire like this. All right. Now the two largest buds, all right, I'm going to make in purple color. So this will be number seven size and this will be number seven small. Okay. So you're just going to have your two, just got my paste measured here. So you have your number seven size. So this is made very similar to the dendrobium, uh, the dendrobium and the cymbidium buds. All right. 
So we're going to take the paste here. Again, just going to put just a little bit of shortening into the mold here. So this is a number seven regular size. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of, you know, push this into the mold here. And then with your cosmetic sponge, this should just fill the mold up. Remember, if you're a little generous with your size and you have excess paste, just like I showed on the other ones, you can just use your little scraper just to trim that off, okay? So then you will take your um, floral tape bud, remember 26 gauge wire, five times hook times five, a little bit of glue onto here. And then you're gonna again go in at a slight angle. So when I do this, I'm going in at a slight angle with my wire like this, and then just sort of push this underneath the paste to encase that and just mold around the top, okay? So you just want, you basically just want the floral tape bud to go in underneath the level of the paste, all right? I'm just gonna push this in so it will be level because then when you dry it, it will dry flat on the top, okay? Just gonna flex your mold here, okay? And then when you take this out, this will give you the half bud, okay? So then what you would do is you um, let these dry. Now then, so that, that's the biggest size bud, which would be number seven. And then this is seven small, okay? So that would make the medium, that would make the medium size bud, which is the next size down, okay? And uh, so that would be done in purple. And then once you've um, dried those, um, you would then move on to make the reverse of that. So the opposite side. Now here, we don't have a sort of two, two part mold like we did on the dendrobium or the cymbidium. So then once the first half is dry, so again, you can pop this in a food dehydrator or um, just let them dry for a few hours. And then it's gonna just repeat the process now. Again, you can use a little bit of glue, but you could also use the piping gel or the super bond here, like I've used on the poppy seed head and the pine cones as well, if you have those. And then this is your dry one. So then you take your dry one, you're gonna press your dry one on the top. But these could also be used, for example, like on my, um, in book two on my uh, tulip, uh, videos, you know, I made a little small French tulip. You could actually use these almost as little tulip buds as well. So this is actually a good and nice addition to Flower Pro. You can use this for many different types of buds. You can make small water lily buds, lotus buds, things like that. Just flex this and again, just going to just um, mold that around. So really you don't have a visible seam there. You're just gonna get your, um, as I said that, just rub that over the edge. All right, and that will be your, that will give you a bud. You see it's slightly darker because obviously when the paste dries it lightens slightly. All right, and that is how you make your the larger buds, okay? So the um, you can see here the large and the medium sized ones are done in those, okay? And then you've got the small and the extra small. So for those, what are you gonna do is you're going to basically repeat the process. And um, what I would do there, just to explain this, you're gonna use just the same similar concept but in, with your wire here, with your 26 gauge wire, because these are smaller, I'm only going to go uh, two times hook and two. So I would just go two times. So one, two, hook, one, two, okay? So just two times hook times two. And then once we've done those, um, you're going to use so paste I would use there, this is the green I use for Cymbidium, all right? And what I did is I just took some of that with about equal amounts of white. So I just made a really, really pale version of that. So I've done it in this really, really pale green. And then what you'd use there, you'd use a number six small and a number five small, okay? So you just would use a number six small in here. So you put the paste in there, put the floral tape bud in, and then this one would be number five small. And then again, you just let those dry and then you would make the repeat half of those. And you see how this is going to give you a small green version of them, all right? But uh, so you can see here, you've got the sort of the, the bigger two buds will be purple and the two smaller buds would be the, um, the green, uh, green, green, pale green color, okay? And that's how we make the buds of the Vanda Orchid. So moving on to the Vanda assembly, um, first of all, 
we're going to use quarter width floral tape here. Okay, so because we don't want to add a lot of bulk, because this is assembled all behind the, the little sort of throat. So we're going to use quarter width light green tape. It's going to go around, just tape down, just need to come down about two and a half centimeters, about one inch down the wire. Okay, we're going to do the same on the wing pedals as well. So all of the components will be done in the same sort of way. Okay. We'll also will take the throat here and uh, gonna just take this, just gonna slide this up to the bottom of the, just sort of slide that up carefully. Okay, and just gonna take down just a, again, just a few centimeters down the wire. Now we're gonna use some strong um, tweezers and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bend the flower down, all right, because this is on a fairly strong wire. So the, the, the actual throat sort of comes down like this. Now the putting together of this is a little bit more com. It's a little bit tighter than, for example, some of the other things that we have done. So first of all, we're going to take the, um, the head. So remember, we always put the flowers together in the same way. So this would be like the head. So the head is going to come here, you see, so the head will go there like that. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my quarter width floral tape. I'm using this like a piece of string. Okay. So you see how I'm actually just using it like string. Now an alternative you could use, which I showed on my Lily um, video was uh, using uh, the dental floss or a wax dental floss that will also be done in the same way. So you're going to take your, then you're going to bend your two legs. Remember all orchids are put together in the same way, like cymbidiums. And when you have individually wired components, you do the head and throat, then you do the two legs and then the two arms. Okay. That's pretty much the standard operating procedure here. I'm going to use my floral tape. So you see, I'm using my floral tape more like sort of string here. And I'm going to attach the first leg and the second leg. You see how you want to try and get them as compact as possible there and as tight as possible into the center. See, so just going to almost like pull your tape there like a piece of string. As I said, dental floss could also be used here as well. You see, these will give you your two. So this is going to give you like your head and your legs, you see. Now then you take your arms and then you're going to have your, so this is obviously the arm here. So these will curl down. So this is again going to come in here. Again, you see how I'm just using my floral tape. Just going to go around like a piece of string. Don't pull too tightly because you'll obviously break the tape. And then my last one will go in here like this. So you see how they're going to be put together. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to just tape down just a little ways with that, just to secure this, break this off. All right. So you see how you've got the, this gives you your, and then we'll actually then go back in with some half whip tape. You can't slide the tape up. So what you're going to do is going to just go round and then stretch it and then go round, then stretch it, then go round, then stretch it until you get past the tight space. Okay. Cause it's, it's just the angle of this flower. It's not so easy to get in there with your fingers because remember this is already now the, the bent forward. So now you're just going to just take down, take down the flower like this. All right. And these pretty much just sort of sit symmetrically around there. And then um, when you have your sepals, all right, your sepals and your petals, petals are always closer to you. So you see like in the case of these, they actually overlap the, the petal, the uh, sepals here, the petals overlap, right? They don't go behind. They're always going to be, so your two petals, your two arms will always be closer towards you. They'll be in front of the, um, of the sepals, just like in the lily. All right. And so that gives you your, uh, your orchid. So that's how the orchid is put together. Okay. Now, if you did have, um, if you did have a situation, I've got a little tiny bit of white there, but that will be dusted over. But if you do have any, you can see the wires, you could also take a little tiny ball of purple paste and you could just literally just use your 
Dresden tool just use like a number three to four ball of paste and you can just fill that in. And if you did find your pedals were a little bit floppy again, you can do that. But if some of these are on 28 gauge wire, they're not going anywhere. See, because I've taped them nice and tightly. Now, when we put this together, um, I'm going to take the buds here. So I'm going to just start off with my little buds. So I'm going to start off with the pale green buds. All right, these are the very light green buds. And then I'm going to add here at this intersection, I'm going to put three 20 gauge wires. Okay. Now, the nice thing about uh, doing this type of orchid is, uh, you know, like for those of you that work in air drying clay, if you made a spike like this, um, you could then make this in the Vanda orchid or the Phalaenopsis orchid. And then when your actual orchid, your house plant at home isn't flowering, then literally you can just stick this wire into a little straw and put it into the um, pot. So, well, then basically you'll have like, you know, orchid blooms all year round because the orchids don't bloom all the year round. And so you can actually make a, uh, a sort of a air drying clay version of your real flowers when it's not in bloom. But you see how you're just going to, so these will actually sort of sit coming up. All right. So they're going to sit coming up like this. And so then you would put in your purple ones. And of course you could do different combinations. And then you're going to come down. It's going to come down to the bottom here. Now, if I was using, if I was using a Vanda orchid just on its own on a cake, like for example, on a Mother's Day cake, a lot of times what I do, just to show you this, just trim your wire. And then the technique I showed um, on um, using my, uh, on the tulips. So this is the two bin that, you know, you can get this in um, garden centers and uh, stores for uh, tying up tomatoes and things like that. And so what I would do is if you were actually just using this as doing as an orchid. So when I actually teach this at my school in Atlanta, what I actually do is this is how the students finish it off. And so we actually take the two bin and you slide the two bin up the, And then if it won't go right the way to the top because it's a little bit thicker, you can just trim down just a little bit. This is the two bin I showed on the calla lilies and also on the um, when I made the French tulips. You're just going to just bring this up so you see this will come up to the top and you see the wire I finished here and then what I would actually do is I would just cut that at an angle like I show on my videos if you haven't seen those you can watch my tulip video and I fill that with green royal icing or softened fondant smooth that off and then once it's finished and you just lay it on top of a cake it looks like you've just picked the orchid off of the the, the stem and then you just sort of laid it on top of the cake. So that's a nice way if you were just using a single flower with no, nothing else added to it. All right. So those are just like little finishing touches that uh, I show on some of my videos. All right. So but uh, in this particular um, in this particular case, I'm going to just take this onto the stem here. So I'm just going to and I'm just going to bend the orchid. So the orchid will just come here to the stem. I don't need to worry about obviously putting the, the tube in on here, but uh, as I said, it's a nice touch when you're doing it just as a single flower. The Phalaenopsis can also be done in the same way as well. And even a Cymbidium. So you could use that for those three large orchids on um, the part three, four, and five. Just gonna take down here. And this is going to give you the, the vanda here. All right. And then this is going to now be ready for uh, coloring. So moving on to the coloring of the Vanda Orchid, I'm going to use here um, a color called Ondina Rose, which is almost sort of like a mauve color, like a gray, mauve, like an old rose color. And then I'm going to use some purple. This is called Royal Purple, but I'm so using about equal quantities of these two. I'm just going to mix this together. And this is the base I use for a lot of my purple flowers because the Purple on its own is a little bit bright and the Ondina Rose is a little bit dull. So this just gives you a really nice sort of a slightly ver darker version of the paste. Of course, just play around with the colors you have. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to dust over basically over the everything. Just try not to dust over the little eyes. OK, because they want to. So you're just going to just brush over. 
this part here. This is going to give you a foundation. So you can just dust all of the what's in the front here. I've already done some of these pedals just because of uh, just repetition. So you dust all of the front and then you'll do the same on the back as well. So you're just going to just come into here. And of course, these are still, although they're quite tightly taped together, but you should be able to still get in there with your dusting powder, being able to move them around as needed, okay? So just this brush around the, mostly into the central area there. So you're gonna do that base purple. And then the purple is also gonna go on to the, the top, sort of half of the bud, all right? And then the, Smallest green bud will be left green, all right? But then you're just gonna put just a little bit of this purple onto the about halfway halfway down onto this one. This will have green on it, okay? So that's gonna be your purple. Now again, you can of course keep this in a separate container and just uh, mark that as, you know, the, the purple mix. Just obviously just clean this up. You know, dusting is a little messy. So usually, you know, you can cover your area with plastic wrap with clean film as well. So I'm now going to use aubergine. Now, aubergine, this is a beautiful color, um, sort of surprising color, because when you add this to purple, what it doesn't look really like eggplant or aubergine color, it looks more like a dark purple. And then when you use this on red, it just gives a beautiful color. So a lot of times I use this um, on red and also on orange things. When you add this to orange, it almost just intensifies. So it's a, it's a nice color to use. So we're going to take some of the aubergine, which is like an eggplant color, And I'm just going to do this. So, so we're just going to use a little bit of that onto the tips of the the buds. So just the tip tips of the buds will have that aubergine color. But you see how it really gives that beautiful color onto there. And then I'm going to just going to go around your edge. But you see how it's really, really popped that. You see how it really gives that pop of color. You see how you're brushing from the outside to the inside here. And of course, you can also put gloves on as well. Most of the time when I'm dusting for my classes, I always wear just vinyl gloves because it's just easier. You can just uh, throw those away. You don't have to wash your hands so much. So just going to brush this around the, and then here, I can just brush this onto the, here onto here, so just on the two sides. And then I'm going to just brush this around the edge here. So we're just going to brush from the outside to the inside. So you'll have this sort of beautiful color you see on, on the edge there of the, of the petal. All right. You'll also re just repeat that on the back as well. Just going to go around the backs here. I'm going to put a little bit of the color onto the, the back. Just going to blend that from the outside to the inside, just around your edge. I'm just going to change out my napkin just each time. So, and then we're going to put some green. So then green, I'm going to use, this is an apple green color. Quite a bright green. So I'm going to use this for the bud. So this bud is going to be dusted over completely green. So that one will be, will be dusted completely green. And see, because we actually started off with just a really pale, pale, pale green color, you'll get that nice vibrant bud. Because if we started off with purple, you could never dust the green on that like that. And then you're going to just brush the green up the base of the second one. So you'll have this nice green on the bottom here. Okay, so you see how you're gonna get a nice sort of color on your bud. And then you're gonna put the green onto the, onto here as well. Just gonna put a little bit of green onto the, onto your buds. And then you can put, then the green can go into the, Put a little bit of green just in the base of the petals here. And you're going 
put a little bit of green on the back as well. So just where everything, where everything meets. So I'll just give you that green, green color onto there. Just a little bit of green, just in the center part here. Okay. So that's going to give you a sort of your base, your base color onto there. Now also, we, because you're working with purple, naturally you're going to get like a little bit of green on your stem. So you can just brush that off. And that, that would also be, as I said, a time where if you prefer to, you could totally dust the flowers all separate and then just wash your hands and then assemble them. But um, so that's going to give you a green. Um, and then you can take your um, food art pen. So this is a food art pen. Um, with the burgundy color. Okay, so it's very similar to the egg. And then you can use this to do your, like your little dots here. So you can do your little dots. I'm using a slightly bigger pen here. All right, so you can just do like little dots here onto the throat. And then you can take the other end of the pen and then you can use that to do some little lines onto here. So you can just do some little lines coming out from here. Alternatively, as I said, that's one option is to use the pen. And then the second option is to use the technique I showed you. So I'm using the sort of the eggplant color here. And again, you can use this with your really fine brush. You can just sort of paint some really fine lines onto here with this like really fine, fine brush. Okay. So you're just going to just brush from the inside to the outside and you're going to get these little sort of markings onto there. And then with a the little tiny, this one here, you can do some little, remember this is like the little spotter brush. You can just do like little tiny spots on here as well. You see? So, so either using your pen or using your brush, you can, you can do that, that, um, on your, uh, flower. Okay. And then we would steam this. So when we steam the flour, going to then just steam the flour here. Wipe my table here. A little tip here is actually, if you ever get dusting powder on your table, you take a little bit of vegetable fat and actually just put that onto, um, and you use a little bit of vegetable fat or white Fat, and that will actually will take color off of plastic. All right. So if you're working on a plastic surface, that's actually a good little tip there. You see, it takes all the color, color off of that. And then we're going to then just steam this. All right. So when you steam this, it's going to sort of really, as I said, just sort of pop that color. Of course, again, it's a, it's a lot shiny, but here again, you can see how you have your beautiful Vanda, purple Vanda orchids um, uh, finished. So a really stunning flower. And, you know, purple is a very popular flower and uh, a very popular color. So this is a lovely flower to use um, on a wedding if somebody wants purple flowers and they want something a little bit different. Um, so you've really got nice deep colors, very much like an iris when you think about a bearded iris or Dutch irises that have this beautiful tones. Of course, as I said, you can make this in pink. It comes in lavender and other colors as well. So search on the internet for a design inspiration. So I hope you've enjoyed this fourth um, uh, orchid, the Vanda orchid. Um, until next time or in the next lesson, I'll see you real soon.